In his continuing efforts to lead his audiences astray, Jay Windley totally ignores the sample container itself, and focuses only on the tiny lid dangling beneath the cylinder. He concludes that the brightly lit portion of Albine's suit is illuminating the lid. However, this explanation cannot account for the portion of cylinder that is facing away from Bean. And as we know from our tests, the lunar surface is not bright enough to illuminate the shadowed side of a cylinder. This can only mean that a secondary light source is illuminating the shadowed side of the object. Probably the same secondary source that is illuminating the shadowed side of Bean. Ironically, it seems that NASA was pretty sloppy with their use of fill lights. Here is another picture of Bean taken during his Apollo 12 moonwalk. Look at his backpack. Notice how the shadowed side of his suit is quite dark. Why does his portrait photo look nothing like this? Here is another photo of Al Bean as he steps into the shadow of the lamp. Didn't we see this before on Apollo 11? If it is indeed a light reflecting off the lunar surface that is illuminating Bean in these two photographs, why is it not illuminating Bean in this one? The sunlight bouncing off the moon is constant. It would not have been possible for the surface to suddenly cease illuminating Bean between shots. And we know it could not have been different exposure settings. The only logical explanation here is that the stagehands carelessly did not use the fill light for this shot. Perhaps they only reserved the fill lighting for the more PR-worthy shots, like these two in which a more artistic and a dramatic effect was preferred over a ghastly silhouette. Needless to say, it was a real pain in the ass to clean all the melted duct tape off the headlight. But it was worth it, because as we've just demonstrated, recreating these Apollo photographs without the aid of fill lights or reflectors would have required an exposure setting so long that it would have been so much easier to use additional lighting. Hey, either that, or the production crew were stupid enough to use either Portland cement or desert sand when they took these fake photos. By far the most ironic statement in this entire scenario comes from Jamie Hyman during their Moonhug special. Across the web, there's a host of hoax theories claiming NASA faked this footage. Look at the size of that rock! And a ton of TV covering the conspiracy claims. But no one has actually taken the time to test them. Until now. This statement is downright laughable. I don't know about conspiracy theorists, but to this day, not one propagandist has bothered to accurately test their reflected light claim. They simply choose to blindly peddle their argument without any verification whatsoever. The only visual aid that they ever show to prove their point is always of an experiment filmed on a surface that is considerably more reflective than the moon itself. Anything from green grass, which has an albedo of 25%, to paper, which has an albedo of 87%. Like Hyman said, no one has actually taken the time to test the claim. For once, we agreed.